Hey everyone, welcome to episode three of the Laser Cutter Build Series. If you're new here, I'm doing a deep dive on building a CO2 laser cutter engraver. At the end of the series, I'm gonna to put together all my build files, documentations, part lists, step-by-step -step guide, just everything you need to help with your build as well. Today, I'm getting onto the Z-axis and bed, which is gonna be this bit in here. So a good place to start, I think, is with assembling the bed frame. This is the same construction method as in episode one, using 90 degree corner brackets and slide in fasteners. I'm gonna assemble the cross braces first before sliding them into the rails. One thing to note is that I've designed the cross braces to hang below the rails. This is so the ends aren't captive or butt jointed inside the frame, which will give me some wiggle room if the cuts aren't exactly the same length. And it'll also let me set the correct final width of the bed frame relative to the other parts, uh, which will hopefully make sense when I get up to that in a little bit. Now to fit the Z-axis bed lifting mechanism in, I need to slide in a few more fasteners into the frame. This is the reason I haven't properly squared up the frame yet, because while a few of the nuts will slide in easily, I need to remove some bits of the frame to get access for others. In the plans, I'll make note to do this before the frame goes together, so no one else needs to do it backwards like me. But with all of those in, now is a good time to go through and actually square up the frame. You can be as fussy as you like here, but I'm just going to do a quick functional squaring as I already know the table that I'm building on isn't 100% flat and with all the rolling around it's doing for the camera, it's, it's already less than an ideal precision setup, um, but it should work fine for what we need. With all the uprights checked and locked off as being plumb and vertical, we need to make sure the y-axis rails are planar relative to each other and the lower rails. To do this, I put a mark on a set square using a bit of tape and I'll go around making sure they're all touching that mark. I recommend doing this with a set of calipers if you want that extra bit of accuracy. Then I want to check the frame itself for any racking. Feel free to screw the frame down to your table. I'm not going to do that yet as this is just a temporary table because I don't know the final size it needs to be until I've really finished building the laser cutter. In the final plans, I'm sure future me will have worked out the extra size needed for the outer frame and all of that, so you won't have this problem. You can just build a suitable platform right from the beginning. To square up the x-axis gantry, I'm going to push it to the far end where I know the y-axis rails are even. I'm lining the two plates up and then locking them down with a couple of clamps to stop them rolling around. Now there's a little bit of wiggle room between the gantry plates and the x-axis rail, so to make sure they're equally wiggled in the same direction, I'll nudge the rail towards the other end of the frame before tightening it all down. Everything is still moving around freely, so that's a good sign. Last episode, you left me with getting the 3D printed parts done. I was trying my best with this build not to have any custom fabricated parts, like off the shelf only, um, so that people who don't have the same access to tools won't be left out. In the end, I had to cave just a little bit with 3D printing, but I kept it to an absolute minimum and as simple as possible. There are other ways around not using a 3D printer, uh, but it was the way that made the most sense. I like to do my test pieces in PLA at a 0.3 millimeter layer height before doing my final prints in ABS plastic, which I find tend to be a little more durable. So the parts I'm going to be using for the z-axis lifting mechanism are these rod holders. We'll get to the other ones later. And here are all the parts for the lift mechanism. We've got, in no particular order, the rod holders, 8mm smooth rods, linear bearing blocks, M5 bolts, pillow block bearings, 8mm lead screws, nut blocks, pulleys, more M5 bolts, and a closed loop timing belt. I need to modify these linear block bearings because they're set up to take M4 bolts, but I need them to take M5. So I'm just gonna drill them out a little. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna shush for a bit so we can just get on with assembly.
So as you can see, the belt's just a tad too short, but that's fine. We're just going to move the assemblies here about 20 millimeters in this way. So you can see I've left these fittings a bit loose and that's to give me some wiggle room across this rail here. Now the reason I've done that is so that I can lift this bearing block up, screw that down to the rail across both ends and then that's going to dictate the overall width of the bed and then I can go through and fasten these down afterwards. Sweet, so now we've got the Z-axis holding its own weight. We need to go around and make sure that this surface here, the bed frame, is planar to the Y-axis rails. And to do that, what I like to do is go around with just a little block of something. Doesn't really matter the height. You're gonna use it as a feeler gauge to just go between the different levels. And so I can see this one needs to come up a bit, just until it's a nice kind of friction fit. And what you do is you just go around all four corners, raising or lowering as you need it until you got the fit right. Once I've got that where I want it, I'm going to go in and lock it off by tightening up the pulleys down at the bottom of the lead screws here. All right, so if I did everything correctly, now the bed should move up and down as I pull on the belt. Sweet. <laughs> so I still need to make the tensioner for the belt. And honestly, I'm debating now whether I put a motor onto it and make it a powered Z-axis. Uh, I wasn't going to, but it would be kind of cool. Um, so. Let me know your thoughts on that. Yeah, I was gonna stop the episode here, but you know what? No, let's, let's keep going. Um, let's add all the other bits on the X and Y axes. Starting with the Y axis motor mounts, we have the aluminum plate, the M5 bolts and slide nuts, which we just slide in and screw in place on both ends of the Y axis rails. Next, the X-axis belt pulley. So ironically, I didn't leave enough space in my design for the spaces, so future me will need to amend that. Then the assemblies of mirror one and mirror two. I'll go deeper into their exact placement in a future episode, but for now, they can just be screwed in place too. And then the X-axis motor mount. The slots were set up to take M4 bolts again, so I filed them out so they could take M5s. Finally, I've got the Y-axis tensioners, made up of the 3D printed bits, the pulley, spacers, nylock nut, 30mm M5 bolt, 40mm M5 bolt, regular nuts, slide nuts and bolts. To mount the tensioners, I need to tap an M5 thread into the end of the V-slot. Then the part is slid on in and tightened down. This will make more sense in a minute when I run the belts through. For now, let's get on with mounting the NEMA 17 motors. I'm attaching the pulleys to them now, but they will need some more better alignment as we go. Each motor is attached with four M3 screws. First the X axis, then the double Y axis. Now I can see the alignment is out for the pulley, so I'm going to solve that by just flipping it over. Now the belts. I'm using GT2 9mm neoprene belts, which are the biggest that will fit on these components. 
I'm going to start with the x-axis first since that should be the easiest. Locking one end into the side of the plate, I can loop it around to get my rough size. I can then thread it through properly after of course double checking I've got it around the right way. Uh, good thing nobody's filming the style weight. When I bring it through the other side I'm pulling it as tight as I can by hand first before tightening down. The extra tension can be dialed in by tightening the screws. For the Y axis it's a pretty similar process. So the Y axis belt needs to thread through inside the V slot extrusion and the best way I've found to do this is to thread some wire through the other side and then pull it back through with the belt attached. So same concept here, I'm pulling the belt as tight as I can before locking it down with zip ties. Then the belt can be tensioned up by winding out the nuts. You thought I was going to forget, didn't you? And then that process is repeated on the other side. Alright, so I think that'll do us for this episode. We're now ready to start on the electronics for next time. See you there.